Now is Vanuaru screwing over its citizens. There are two major issues. And the real problem now is that it now wants its citizens, especially the CBI citizens, right? This affects the CBI, the pay for passport candidates. Once you become a citizen, you have to actually, you would, requ you would be required to travel to Vanuaru to get your passport. Now, this is a catastrophe. How do you travel to Vanuaru? I mean, we'll get to that in the second half of the video. But the first issue really was people paid for the EU access. And I do get a lot of uh, clients and they discuss how they purchased the Vanuaru citizenship so that they can have the, the Schengen access. And then once the payment was done, once they got the passports, they thought they were proud Vanuaru citizens so that they are able to travel to the EU. Now they have Schengen access for life. The next thing, for some people in a couple of months, the Schengen access was revoked. Now it doesn't have any UK, Ireland, Schengen. It never had any Australia, New Zealand, US, Canada, none of that. So where do you go with this passport? Uh, I do understand that for some very finite set of people, this may come in handy. So that's, that's the first thing, right? You paid, let's say 140, 150, uh, K USD. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money to be eligible and you know to apply for this kind of citizenship and get the passport. You ex typically expect somewhat of an access when you spend so much money, and a lot of people did. A lot of people thought that they are on the right track. They're getting a citizenship. This is more discreet. The Caribbean ones has the supreme due diligence and crazy amount of uh, documentation, and also the time it took to get the Caribbean ones was, let's say, eight months to a year. A lot of people aren't necessarily doing anything wrong. They're just looking for a quick option. So Vanuaru was very convenient where you spent a couple of months and you had this green, flashy green passport in your hand. And it also had all the bells and whistles. But then, yeah, the, the unfortunate reality is that now it's pretty trashy. It's really, and that's just my opinion. I'm not you know, giving any immigration advice here, it really doesn't have any access at all. So it's as good as any ridiculous third world country passport. And when I say ridiculous, I mean the access is ridiculous, right? The country is not ridiculous. The second big issue now with Vanuatu is that they're going to give you the citizenship. That's fine. You know, you'll get the citizenship on time. The money still remains the same. You're talking about in that 150 to 160 K range. That's all, 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 that, all that's going to stay the same. But once you become a citizen, Vanuatu wants its citizens to travel to Vanuatu to collect the passport. Now, the pool of people that typically get the Vanuatu passport are people from countries that have really pathetic passports. So let's say you upgrade and get this Vanuatu citizenship. How do you travel there? You have a couple of options. Let's say you, know, you go through a Western nation or some developed nation. Typically, because the Vanuaru passport has lost all the access, it doesn't have access to Australia. So don't think that you're going to use that as the bypass uh, or let, let's say the, you know, the, the layover to go to Vanuaru. And then your home country passport in most cases is going to be a pathetic third world country passport. So you're anyways, you don't have access on your home country passport. You don't have access on your Vanuaru passport or let's say the Vanuaru citizenship. How are you supposed to travel to that country? You're going to take some indirect connections, maybe three, four, five connections. How is that even a thing? So it's terrible situation. Now it makes it super inconvenient because the whole objective left with this passport after having literally no access was that you know you pay the money quietly they just dispatch the the paperwork right you get the passport in mail in a couple of months you receive this green thing in the in the mail but now if you're required to actually travel all the way to Vanuatu to do some serious process then I think this becomes a big non-option to a lot of people. This is primarily the reason why you want real citizenships. You don't want to get into all of this, right? You were talking about banking. Why do you need a citizenship? You need a citizenship for banking. You need a citizenship for access. You need the citizenship for respect. So you only get all these things when you have real options. Now in the interim, yes, some people have the money. They spend on getting such things. But then each day there is a headache, right? Each day there's a change. And these are volatile options. These are not long lasting solutions. And I have been 
talking about this and I track all these things, what happens with all these situations. I have a team of attorneys across the globe. Residencies, getting people residencies or getting families their residency permits is only one part of the puzzle. The other part of the puzzle is the tracking mechanism. How do I protect all these families from different pitfalls? Different governments across the globe are only there to get you a small mistake and they they have you in their trap, right? So in order to stay out of the trap, you need, you need to have unique options. Yes, I do understand in some very limited circumstances, you might need to purchase an outright passport for a limited time, right? But then outside of that time, you want to have all the natural options. Now, I think particularly one of the key areas of focus and safety has been Africa's the biggest problem with Africa is, is that they, most of the countries don't allow dual citizenship. And there are some direct cash options. And I've made a separate video on cash options, right? There are a couple of options in the Africas where either you pay $6,800 and get the permanent residency in cash. And when I say cash, this is not any income requirements or any job requirements or any business requirements, right? There's a second option in the Africas where you're paying $1,000 in application fees and that gets you effectively a permanent residency in the Africa. So that's really the hot region where you can grab these important options. Uh, and then in Latin America, you have options where you can show your active salary, you can get the residency, you can earn one of the strongest passports in the world. And let's say you want to get other options, then you show your passive income, or you also have certain options where you can convert active income to passive income. What you can also do, interestingly, you can convert your bank balance into passive income without losing any money. So you're just diversifying, converting your bank balance, you're putting it in a fixed deposit, you're earning some passive income, and then you're qualifying for residency. So there are some options like that too. That's where, you know, we discuss the strategy, which conversion makes the best sense for you. You want to at least target a couple of options in Latin Americas. So you have your Africas, you have your Latin Americas, and a lot of my Australian clients also focus on Asia for so tax advantages. So you have four Asian options, the MM2H, the CM2H, the Thai Elite, and then you also have the Philippines option, SIRV and SRRV, based on whichever you know fits your needs the best, whichever is the easiest and the fastest. Philippines has some exciting tax advantages. Now, yes, the overhyped and the overmarketed -market option is the UAE option, but that comes at a steep cost. It's not just paying those agents to you know, set up your company in let's say $20,000, but then it also comes with its own catches. The respect and the way it's viewed around the world, that's one of the things that you need to keep into account. Secondly, the government is getting extremely strict day by day. Uh, immigration is getting strict and banking is getting strict. Now, based on what kind of person you are, the kind of clients that I have is that they want to do the right thing, but they also don't want to be on the limelight or spotlight all the time. So based on your situation, and again, countries move in and out of the FATF gray list that has impacts and that's what we track, right? That's what we specialize in, tracking the impact and what really makes sense in different situations. And at any point in time, you're interested in striking any residency, either it's in the Asia's or Latin America's or the Africa's, our speciality is to get you the benefit at the fastest possible time. And that's what differentiates us from our comp competitors where we focus our energies on getting the benefits immediately. So we have fast attorneys, we have good attorneys, knowledgeable attorneys, and some of the best who are directly connected with immigration, right? They're there all the time on the ground doing all the hard work. And if you aren't subscribed to the channel, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any latest changes to any of the programs. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and catch you in the next one.